<laughs> how how has your what is your practice like in terms of I imagine you know in the last 50 years you've been shaping a practice as it is today and what you're working on what your practice consists of what does that look like sensei Kia ora, welcome to the Invisible Sensei podcast. This is a podcast about my experiences as a martial artist, as a student, as a teacher, as someone who from time to time has stubbed their toes on the problems of the world and kind of gone, what am I doing this for? Please take time to check out the link in the description. It will take you to our YouTube channel and also to our profiles on social media, which you're most welcome to check out and contact us on. We also have a wonderful merch shop where you can grab cups and a couple of other things if you're wanting to support the podcast or if you're wanting to support it more directly, we have a link that you can do that also. Either way, enjoy the podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in and keep training, keep smiling, keep enjoying and most importantly, keep developing. Um. One, one uh, privilege of training a long time is acquiring injuries. So I have uh, both hip replacements, you know, titanium both hips. I have a, three screws in a shoulder. You know, so my wife who logged on, Marion, who's 68, the fittest person, most gifted person in karate, has lots of shoulder injuries and surgeries and things like that. You know, so we acquired that stuff. So you have to develop kind of a, a, you know, holistic, not holistic meaning ever encompassing, but healthy way of training. You know, so I, I, Seven days a week, I either do karate or go to the gym, you know. So the days I don't teach, which is rare, I'll go to gym, I'll do, uh, you know, 45, 50 minutes of weights and some uh, balance exercises, kind of like, a, you know, a BJJ, you know, uh, solo exercises or, uh, you know, what they call in Brazil, uh, gimnastica natural, which is kind of, you know, you kind of do all that stuff, you know, that kind of stuff. And a little, little bit of cardio, you know, my wife spins every day for 45 to 90 minutes. She's obsessed and she has zero body fat and all this stuff. I enjoy a nice hamburger and a glass of red wine. So I don't, uh, you know, I don't suffer from that, uh, you know, the problem having no, no body fat because, you know, for me, it's about being healthy, but also enjoying life, you know? So, but it's, it's, for me, it's train every day. I teach every day. I try, you know, I, I, I don't teach one class a day. If I do teach, I'll teach seven, eight classes back to back and I'll do 30, 40% of the class. So I'll start at four o'clock, you know, nine o'clock, I'm still doing a low block punch front kick, you know, and, I'll, and I'm still, you know, the Japanese new Genki healthy. I'm still Genki. I'm, I can still outkick the 30 year olds after five, six hours. So maybe it's ego, maybe it's ego, you know, but the thing is I can sustain that and I will sustain that until I die. So, you know, the whole thing about retirement, like, you know, like some students say to me, you know, since when are you going to retire? Well, when they put me in a box, you know, and they nail the box shut, you know, and I can't push that lid open, I'll be retired at that point. But, you know, that that's it. And, and you know, karate, karate goes hand in hand with the, you know, Okinawa diet. Okinawa diet is, was so popular 10 years ago, all these books. And they miss the whole thing. You know, Okinawa diet has nothing to do with Okinawa diet because, you know, whether you eat local pick, pick vegetables or you eat uh, soki soba, you know, fatty uh, ribs and, and broth, whatever, it's, the thing is about work, you know, so you have 80 year old people, 90 year old people, 100 year old people on Canal going to work every day. They'll tend their fields, you know, and also Sicily, you know, Sardinia, Corsica, you have all these blue zones in Greece. The secret is the 100 year old guy gets up and he goes to work and he takes a sheep out for a walk, whatever it is, or he tends to think. The minute you retire, you die. So, you know, the secret of perfection is the doing, not receiving. So just basically the action of practicing so whether I do, you know, uh, one of my uh, amazing students was supposed to teach BJJ. He was supposed to come down last last on Wednesday and teach classes. He tested positive for COVID. So obviously he had to stay within his house. You know, his dojo was looked after. He couldn't come for a dojo. So I had to go teach, you know, grappling. So I'm on the floor for two hours, you know, doing, you know, this, guard passes, all this stuff, which I can do, you know, all this stuff. But my hips hurt, you know, and it's, it's a, I'm not, that's not my you know, milieu or you want to call it environment, daily environment. So I suffered, but, you know, I enjoyed it. You know, I, I think I did okay class and I really enjoyed it, you know, but it's just about doing, right? So, you know, it's just, and, and I think that, you know, well, you're such an intelligent guy. I think that's where criticism come from. Criticism comes from people who are not doing stuff, you know, and, you know, you can go on this tirade about, uh, you know, keyboard warriors and all this stuff, people who, 
you know, we'll, we'll troll people and say negative things about stuff. But if you're, if you're doing something, if you're really practicing, how could I make a negative comment about a Taekwondo person or a Koju person or Jiu Jitsu person or something? You know, because when I look at them, I see the same struggle that I'm experiencing every day. The minute I stop experiencing that struggle, I'm up to be superior and have comments about stuff and have opinions about stuff. But, you know, if I just finish teaching or training, I, I'm conflicted about my performance. So myself, so how could you be negative about somebody else? It's actually encouraging to me, Sensei, um, to hear that you, I mean, obviously everyone has their, their insecurities and sort of, you know, compare themselves and, and this and that. Um, it's refreshing to know that, you know, that you're lighting the path in terms of, um, you know, for me, I, I have, and I'm touching wood, I'm knocking on the table, <laughs> haven't had any replacement as of yet, um, you know, I have various injuries and so on and so forth, but um, yeah, as you say, it's about continuing, you know, it's about um, continuing to stir the pot, maybe sometimes not that quickly, but yeah. certainly, <laughs> certainly, um, certainly just if you can continue at whatever speed is really really important um sensei with in my early, my formative years with gorgeru i was a member of the ogkf briefly as a as a as a kid and then my sensei left the ogkf and i, and I followed him uh, he was a father figure so the style didn't really matter the affiliation didn't matter the patch on the key didn't matter but i remember that one thing that we were encouraged to do was emulate Higuana Sensei. I mean, and I'm using Higuana Sensei. It could right. be anyone. You can put yeah. irrespective of style. Were there people that you emulated that you went, right, I want to do Kata like that person and I want to do Kabuto like that person. And did you get to a point where you decided to do it like um, yourself? Was there, was there a hmm. kind of an aha moment and, and what led to that? I've, I've always tried to do things my own way, and I'll tell, tell, tell you why. It was a it was a homage to those people, because you know I have some very serious you know uh, Okinawan okay, masters who are my friends, and we argue, but we argue in, in private. So if I go to the Ojo Tate class, you know whatever they say, you bow your head and you do it, right? And afterwards, I'll say to them, you know, privately, I think you're blocking at a wrong angle. You know, the bow should be to the shoulder, not to the head. And they'll go, oh, you're wrong, and then you know we'll start arguing for. 20 minutes about stuff and we don't resolve anything because we both know we're, we're both right so nothing really gets resolved but uh there has to be a moment when you detach you know the shoe hari you know shoes to protect you know your you know i see he can only sense is one of the you know he's like Miyamoto musashi he's the sword saint you know the the, the kanji or you know uh tono kami whatever you want to call him you know he's he's an incredible person there's so many other people who are like that shinjo Yohida Sensei, who's the Ichiru strongman, you know, fastest knockout in Okinawa karate, breaks five baseball bats with a shin. People want to be like him, you know. So if he puts his patch from the left shoulder to the right shoulder, all the students will move the patch from the left to the right shoulder. But that's that's not what it is about. It's about you know looking at somebody who's like, okay, what makes him so strong? You know, so it's not how to become like them, but just what is the process, what is the journey that he follows much more important than actually the results where they're at, right? Are they taller than you? Are they smaller than you? You know, there's different dynamics, different hip positionings. So sometimes you, you have to modify your techniques, you know, all, all those things. So, um, you know, I, I've met uh, maybe 50 or more 10 times, you know. So like, you know, famous teacher like Nagamini Soshin, I met him before he had a stroke and after he had a stroke. So he was the most brilliant person I ever met, Nagamini Soshin, the founder of Matsubasho Maru. Uh, you know, I would talk to him about stuff, and his son Takeyoshi would translate. And, and Nagami Sensei spoke no English. Takeyoshi lived in Ohio for seven, eight years. He spoke perfect English. So to ask his son Takeyoshi a question about some technique, and I would say two words, and, and Nagami Sensei would be like, he wanted to answer. He knew right away because he didn't understand my words, but he understood the question perfectly. So, you know, there's this sense that, that uh, non spoken stuff, you know, so Nagami Sensei. Uh, you know, Akimini Eisuke Sensei, who was a Kabuto teacher, and Matayoshi Sensei, I trained for five different visits over five years. They're, they're like masters of their, their art. You know, Yagi Sensei, when he was younger, and Gojuru, things like that. Uh, you heard Ko Sensei, and on and on and on, and all these great people. The next generations came up, and they were more mainland Japanese. So they were more into building the groups and associations and wearing a tie and a jacket versus to wearing the Okinawan 
flowery shirt, whatever you want to call it, you know, like everything changed a little bit. And, uh, you know, and, and I have these memories of these famous tent on masters and another person, it's just incredible. Nakazato Joan, you know, Nakazato Joan is a teacher of a style called Shorinjiru and Shorinjiru, Shonru, Kobayashi Ru, Matsuri, there are just variations of what Kian and Tosu taught basically. I mean, the, the different understanding of the same kanas, you know, uh, you know, 50, you know, whether you do Meibukan, Junokan, you know, whatever, Gojuru, you're still doing, you know, Seipai and, you know, Kururufa, whatever, right, you know. So Nakazato Joan Sensei had perfect basics, you know, his Seisan, his bow strikes were perfect. You know, I just, wow, this guy's, and he was really uh, no bullshit sensei. You know, like he spoke his mind and, you know, wow, this guy's incredible. I even met a lot of other people. And, you know, and then I met uh, Hokama Tetsuhiro, everything else Hokama sensei. He's very popular with foreigners and like, I met him about 30 years ago. And I'll, I'll tell you what really turned me on to Hokama sensei. And I sent, a year later, I sent my dear friend, my senior Chuck Merriman to speak, speak to him. And he didn't get off, you know, he didn't enjoy that meeting. And I really, and I couldn't understand why. I asked Hokama Sensei two, three questions. And he says, sorry, I don't know the answer. I said, what? I don't know the answer. But, but you know, get in the car. Maybe we'll go see somebody who knows. And for me, that was so refreshing to have somebody say, you know, I don't really know. it. Let's, let's find out. What other teachers would basically say, you know, I, I met several teachers who said to me, um, hmm, you're a foreigner. You'll never understand this. You know, you know, I asked somebody, uh, one, one teacher about the concept of wabi-sabi, you know, this whole thing. I was, you know, when I was younger, I was big into Japanese culture, you know, like, you know, what is wabi-sabi, you know, like Zen, all this stuff, tea ceremonies, this anything to do karate. And he said, you'll never understand. What he meant is, I don't understand, right? So, so why would I explain something if they, I understand? And what Hokama sense would be the opposite. Like, I don't understand. Let's go see teacher university. He knows. He tells me, you know. That's why I had such a great relation with Okama Sensei for 30 years, because, uh, you know, he says to me, uh, you and me, we're Doryu. I said, what is that Sensei? He says, Kali, Kali. I said, we don't practice karate. We make field research. And field research was bas basically driving all over around Okinawa, which is not a big place, and knocking people's doors and, you know, saying to neighbors, hey, is so-and-so alive still? He died. Oh, okay, he died. Where does his son live? He lives like across the street. Okay, can we talk to you? Uh, I'm busy now. Come back, you know. And that kind of stuff, and, and a lot of those those uh, trips didn't really warrant huge responses. You know, it wasn't like you know, uh, instant flesh of satori or nirvana. You know, but it was like that's the process, right? The process is struggle. You know, there are no hundred percent black and white answers. You just have to persevere and and try, right? So to to, to this day, I'm so indebted to Okama Sensei for changing my mind. How you know the whole con concept? You know, like. In karate, you do benkyo for 20, 25 years, which is practice, and kenkyo, which is research for 25. And then you can call yourself a master if you wish. You know, but the whole thing is first just do by rote. Since it says, you know, you know, you put your shudo by the ear and you chop out, you do that, you do that. And then later on, what are the 47 different versions of doing the shudo strike? Right. And then you know, same thing with research and talking to people. So uh, another person that really changed my view was uh uh, Shizato Katsuhiko Sensei, who was a, a senior student of uh, Kishaba Sensei, they had their own style, kind of Matsubashi Ru, which was very hip oriented, very dynamic strikes. His Bojitsu was Yamani Ryu, a student of Kishaba Sensei's other Kishaba Sensei, his two brothers, and he had kind of swinging, rapid fire bow, you know. And, and, and for him, it was for me, the whole thing is like, the question was like, can you teach me 12 different katas? Was like, why does this work? Like, you know, why is this, you know, theoretical strike better than this theoretical strike? You know, there's no hitting a target. There's nothing really causing an effect. There's no testing in combat. So, so why, you know, why is this better? And, you know, he explained to me, he was, uh, uh, Shinzato Sensei was, a, at that time, was the dean of the Rukyu International University. He spoke English perfectly. He graduated from, you know, uh, DA and, and uh, master's program in the U.S., perfect English. And he wrote out all these scientific explanations and, you know, and I didn't really understand, but I understood, I understood that he really felt it was correct and the right way of doing stuff, you know, so his Yamani Bojitsu was a specific way and then, you know, Matayoshi Sensei Bojitsu was a different way, you know, Katsuhiko Sensei was a different way and all this stuff. So I try to kind of embrace all these elements and, and go home and kind of digest them and figure out 
what is the way that I want to practice based on my reality, my expectations, my needs. So I would distill those things and I'd go back, you know, six months later and talk to them again and do this. So, you know, so I ended up teaching very strange curriculum, you know, uh, where I teach Okinawan karate and Ruju Kubudo, but it's not really style based. So we practice like, you know, we'll do one kata and the next kata is kururufa. You know, we'll do gujishio or useshi and the next kata is superumpe. So I don't really have a system, you know, you can ask me anything, I'll be glad to explain. Just don't ask me what style of karate I teach because I'll be very confused because to me, karate is karate, you know, just, it's just punching and kicking. And Kobudo is just using, you know, the predestined tools of Okinawan Kobudo in a way that might protect your life. But it's not my, I don't practice my Jewish Kobudo, I practice Ruki Kobudo, Yamani Bojitsu. I did some village styles, Maida Bo, Shashki Bo, Kuchinda Bo, you know, that kind of stuff. And I embrace principles, you know, rather than katas or techniques, things like that, you know. So all that stuff is stored and I want to still explore and it will take another 10, 12 years, 10 to 20 years to kind of flash them out and make them better. So. Wow. <laughs> okay, well, that's... Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I, I, I suppose for me, you know, just in, in, in reflecting, I guess, in my own experience, uh, the vulnerability that it, that it takes a teacher to say, I don't know the answer to the question, but maybe let's find out together is huge. I, I think also too, uh, in my experience, learning different elements of our indigenous arts, right. um, oftentimes mm. we get to a certain impasse in which a particular, um, what we call them, we call them kayako um, teacher, mm. wouldn't- Say, say it again, handle, say it again. Kayako? Kayako. 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 And that means teacher? It means teacher. Okay. And um, what would happen is that they go, well, I don't know, but I'll, if you're wanting to learn this particular thing, I'll send you to this, to my uncle over here or my cousin or this yeah. person. And this yeah, exactly. Is, you know, and and I, I know for me, um, I have a small dojo that's been going for a few years, um, you know, a few, you know, not thousands of students, not, not yet since I've kept it very exclusive. <laughs> but... Um, uh, I remember some students wanted to do get into MMA, and I have a little bit of a um, an experience, some competitive experience in MMA. And I thought they said, "Oh, well, you know, you've done MMA, so you know you can train it." So I said, "Well, I'm not interested in it." And I, hmm. having done it, it was an experiential thing for me. I said, "Let's find someone if you want to, if that's where you want to go. Let's find someone who can really train you, right. get you in the conditioning, right. be really specific about the training, and so on and so forth." Um, and I think it's refreshing that you you it's, it's it seems like a discovery of a rediscovery of how it was as opposed to sort of something new. I mean, in your kind of adventures, I would I would turn them with uh, Hokama yeah. Sensei. That sounds amazing. So, Sensei, how do you grow that sense of curiosity within your own students? I, I think it was in bread. I was always there. You know, I always ask questions. You know. Um, you know, you're talking about rank when I start training. I, I thought of black belt, there was no ranks, you know, that kind of stuff. And then certainly there's styles, and I want to know what, what is the difference between the predominant style in Canada at the time was called Chito Ryu. And Chito Ryu is a very strange style. It's Chito says since I created this style based on teaching of Kian, uh, you know, so Kian kind of base forms, you know, be a, kind of a shorn root offshoot, if you will, you know, so kind of like why show it kind of so, so deep or why do we stand up? So I don't always have questions and, you know, um, it just, it's not curiosity for sake of knowing, it's curiosity for doing, you know, just like, you know, can you show me three different ways to do this? And I'll find out which one fits my body and works best for myself. Um, you know, so it was never really, you know, and it's not about, uh, let me tell you what I found out. It was never like about public thing or public needs you know, uh, publishing, things like that, sharing stuff. I, you know, I don't really, I keep stuff to myself. I have a very strong group of senior students. You know, my students have been training longer than most so-called masters out there. You know, I have a lot of students been training with me for 45 years or nearly 50 years. And they're, you know, the seven and eight dons, they have their own dojos and many generations. And we talk about stuff and I'll defer to them on specific aspects. So, you know, and, and it's just, it's like a mastermind group, you know? So the whole thing is about, you know, like a Kenku kind is research, you know, tr truly, it's not just a name on a certificate or belt, but Kenku Kai is a daily practice to research, you know, like, you know, what happens if I move my foot to the left, or the right, you know, what happens if I guess pat it, can I actually take him down, you know, you know, does this punch actually work, you know, so, so, uh, 
I think the Kenkyukai concept or, or you know research concept is is the essence of progressing martial arts. You know, so you know the, the three stages: shuhari. You know, everybody's familiar with those those famous terms. But shu is to protect, protect your teacher. You know, so if you're from Higonona Sensei's group, you know, you'll dress like him. If he cuts his pants one inch shorter, you'll cut your pants one inch shorter. If he wears it wider, you'll do that. If he's got uh, calluses on top of his fists, you will seek to have calluses on top of your fists. But you're not any better fighter or right? anybody martial artist. But, you know, uh, I look at people who are like 30 years old. They look like Higanon Sensei. You know, like they, they, they morph their being into that. You know, and I've seen that with many other teachers, you know. Uh, so how is establishing your own family, basically? You know, you, you have your own way of thinking. You're still respectful to your teacher, but you have your own ideas. And Ri's detachment. Ri is really... Styles don't really matter, you know. A lot of people will say they're in the restage, but they're not. You know, they're just still you still want to prove to you why their system or style is better than yours. Re, re is you know everything works, nothing works. You know this this the Zen concept of Mushin, you know, the academy of knowingness. Uh, you know, uh, a famous teacher by name Suzuki used to say is a true expert who wants is someone who knows less and less. Uh, sorry, knows more and more, less and less every day until he knows nothing. So a, a true expert is somebody who knows more and more about nothing until he knows, uh, you know, and the, the whole thing is like, you know, it becomes singular punch, you know, that's all it is, you know, after you do the 147 version of Nanaihanshi Katas on YouTube, it's about the way your hip turns and you punch the Makiwara, you know, that's, that's the penultimate thing, right? There's nothing else. When you're young, since you know, you have the body that, 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 that regenerates in 20 minutes. That's really funny because right. I think for me personally, I think my my karate is better now, but my ability to do it is worse. <laughs> so it's a really strange thing. What I was gonna say, there's a lesson in that as well. You know, when you have injuries and pain, things like that, it's a lesson to yourself as well. You know, to be you know, be careful, to train correctly, to overcome something. You know, you don't give up. You know, it's just. Adversity is the beginning to success, right? I mean, just, if you never test ad adversity, what is success? It's make believe, right? 